Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at this, which is the Acer Predator Helios uh, PH31752. Uh, this is the 13, uh, sorry, the 17.3 inch version of the Acer Predator Helios 300. And what we're going to do is we are stripping down the machine. Primarily, we are going to look at cleaning this cooler. As you can see here, there's a lot of dust build up. Um, but on the way there, we will also look at how to upgrade some bits like the RAM, SSD and hard drive. So, to start with, if we were purely interested in upgrading the RAM, we have a access cover here. And we can so push our pry tool in under the little corner of the cover there, and we have access to our two dim slots. These can then be removed by pulling the edges, and we can see these are DDR4 uh, 2666 megahertz modules. Um, there are two modules in here, and again, that one can be removed just by pulling the two clips and refitted by just lining them up and pressing down. Similarly, the 2.5 inch SATA hard drive is under this cover here. All the screws in the base are the same size, um, so there is no real need to be too precious about how those are um, stored to one side. What we do find, however, is the screws that hold in the hard drive itself are smaller, so we are going to keep those separate. We are using a Phillips uh, size O screwdriver bit here and some of the internal screws require a smaller double O. Uh, there will be a link in the description below to the screwdriver kit that I use, uh, pry tools and upgraded components. So with those undone, what we can do then is and if we get our pry tool and just lift under the hard drive to remove it, just pull off the connector here. If we were replacing it, then it is these four screws on the side hold it in and we would screw in a replacement drive in its place. We're not doing that today, so I'm just going to put that to one side. To get into the laptop now, we need to go around the base. So we do have a M2 slot inside this machine. So there are options to upgrade that main SSD as well as the uh, secondary hard drive fairly easily. Uh, there are quite a few screws in the base here, but all of them are exposed, nothing hidden. So we just need to go around. Like I say, they're all the same size, so there's no need to keep track of what's come from where. These are all fairly simple to remove. With that done, we are then going to just double check, make sure we've removed everything. That looks to be the case. So we're then going to take our pry tool and what we're going to do is find the edge between the base of the laptop and the palm rest and slide the pry tool in there. Now this can be a bit easier if you lift the machine around or position it so you've got a bit of a better angle. Um, just for filming purposes, I'm gonna keep it in the same position. So what we're gonna do is just pull up and get the pry tool in and going along this gap. So we're going to go around the other side. I found going around the left side next to be the easiest option on this. 
I say quite tricky with the camera in the way here but we can get in shouldn't be necessary to press too hard on any of this Once I find the easiest option then is to get towards the back. So if we pull up here. And then try and just find at the back where the two pieces join together. Just levering the parts again there. Like I say, it's very hard to see this because I can't uh, move around. But with that side lifted, we can then lift the panel clear. I'm going to clean up these uh, vent sections off camera just with a little mini vac. Now, once we're inside, um, so our first job will be to get in and with just two fingers, just gently unplug the battery, just ensures that you're not going to accidentally power the machine on. Once we're inside, if we wanted to replace the wireless card, we have a single screw here. We can then slot out the card, and we have the two antennas. Simply pull those off, and then if you were to replace the card, just slightly fiddly bit but just click back on the two aerial leads just make sure you made note so that you know number one is the aux in white number two is the main in black and quite fiddly these because they're very small but just click both on reinsert and screw down the card. Similarly for the SSD we have a M2 2280 drive we can take our screwdriver, remove the little retention screw, take that out and then our replacement will just be slotted into place and screwed down. Now of course the main reason we're looking at this one we can see the heat sinks are quite dusted up. Now, uh, sorry, the fan is quite dusted up. I would anticipate the heat sink is too. What we're going to do to start is we have two screws holding down the fans. Now there are two more screw holes. On this machine these were completely unoccupied. Whether that is someone who's been in here before and tampered with it or that is as it comes, I'm not entirely sure. That is just the case on this machine. Our next thing is just going to be to ease out the two fan connectors. So one here and the other which sits sort of underneath the Wi-Fi antennas. So ease out those connectors and this one runs under these ribbon cables. So what we may just need to do we could just thread it out from underneath, um, but what will probably be easier is just to pop out that connector there. So that we can just lift it out the way. Once it goes under the aerial leads, that's not a major issue. Now, these fans are actually attached to this whole shroud as part of the heatsink. So what we have to do next is we are going to remove the three screws here and four screws here that hold down the heatsink and while we're doing this we're going to just give everything a clean and repaste. Again all these heatsink screws look to be the same size. 
as each other, not as like the screws on the back or anything. So with that done, we are then going to just lift the end of the heat pipe and the heat sink here. And gently thread out that cable from under and underneath everything. And that has freed the heat sink for us. Now what I'm going to do is just put this on the table and we will swap things around and look just at cleaning that up in separately. So looking purely at the heatsink now. And what I'm going to get is a little blue roll and a little IPA, so isopropanol alcohol. Just put a bit of that on the old thermal paste. Take a little blue roll and just first of all dab up the excess and then just wipe down the old thermal paste. So to give us a nice uh, I'm not going to touch any of the thermal pads, we're just going to keep those as they were, but that should clean off the old thermal paste. With that done, we're then going to flip over the heatsink and what we want to do is get the two fans removed. So we are going to go to our Phillips 00 bit and remove these screws which connect the heat sinks to the shroud. four on each heat sink. Again, all the screws holding them in are the same. With those removed, we can then flip the heat sink over and we can see we now have access to the heat sinks these are not actually as bad as I thought but the uh, fan themselves are quite furred up
So having gone through and cleaned out all the fan blades, it was quite sticky in here, so I wonder if the owner may have been a smoker. Um, but we have cleaned out all of that. I ended up sort of spraying them down with IPA and just brushing everything out. We are then going to turn it back over and screw back in fan shrouds. So although the, um, the heatsink themselves were not actually too bad, I was quite concerned about how all these gaps in the fans were uh, quite blocked by dust and, and like I say it was quite sticky in that so whether, uh, whether there was any sort of tar or anything in there. So with that done we're going to bring back the laptop and so as with the heat sinks, we're just going to apply a little spray of IPA onto the two chips and clean off the old thermal paste And with that done, we're just going to put a little Arctic Silver on each chip. Having done that, we're then going to take the heatsink. Line that up, press down, and then just going to lift. So just make sure we have reasonable coverage. So, yeah, they sort of squidge down okay as we tighten up the heatsink. And we're going to start by refitting the screws to the heat sinks. First of all this one on the graphics. And then on the CPU side, having done that, we're then just going to adjust up the cables on this side. So we have that one for the aerial, which is underneath the fan. So we're going to pull that back out. reconnect it. We are then going to refit the fan heat sinks at uh, the fan connectors sorry. So one and two. 
take back down the aerial lead and reconnect this SATA connector which runs under these two but over the fan cable if we can see this so tab goes up that down and make sure things are all lined up for reconnecting the SATA connector. So with that done all that should really be left for us to do is to reconnect the battery and refit the two fan screws. Like I say there are two here which are not occupied, whether they have been removed by someone else I am not too sure. Next I'm just going to give the base a quick clean and then refit. So to refit the base, uh, best option I've found is to position it over this side and begin to press down. Make sure the SATA cable is coming through in the right position and just clip down. Our first job then is to refit the SATA hard drive, so reconnect that connector and find the four screws to screw it back into position. And then with this done, all that is left for us to do is to refit the screws into the base and refit these two access panels. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you have any questions and hit like if it has helped you fix or upgrade your laptop and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.